Hello dear class and students I hope everyone is doing well so welcome to lesson number 1 of a new chapter that is metals and nonmetals so guys this is an important chapter in chemistry well in this module we will see introduction and then physical properties of metals and nonmetals okay guys now before going to the introduction let us look at the pictures so here you can see that the little girl she is asking to her mom mom what are you using to wrap my burger So the mom replied this is a foil made up of aluminum so as you can see here the mother is using an aluminum foil to wrap the burger so basically we use the aluminum foil to wrap our foods all right now here you can see that this little curious girl she is asking to the doctor doctor what is this liquid inside the thermometer so the doctor replied the liquid inside the thermometer is mercury So I guess everyone has seen the thermometer, right? So inside the thermometer, this mercury is present. Now here, this little girl she is asking to her mom, "Mom, why is your ring shining so much?" So the mom replied, "The ring is shining so much as it is made of diamond." Now as you can see here, that the ring is shining so much because it is made up of diamond, and as you all know that diamond it shines. All right guys now let us look at the introduction elements can be classified into two categories so basically we can classify the elements into two categories they are metals and nonmetals in the previous slide we studied substances such as aluminum mercury and diamond so guys in our previous slide we have already studied about the substances such as aluminum mercury and diamond Aluminum and mercury are examples of metals. So aluminum and mercury they are metals. Whereas diamond it is an example of non-metal. All right? Now we will see the physical properties of metals and non-metals. So they are the physical state, luster, malleability and ductility, hardness, color, thermal conductivity, electrical conductivity and sonority. Okay so these are the physical properties of metals and nonmetals and we are going to study its physical property one by one all right but before that let us see few questions now see question number 1 how elements are classified okay guys so now can you tell me how we can classify the elements yes we have already studied that elements can be classified into two categories they are yes they are metals and nonmetals all right Now see question number 2 give two examples of metals and nonmetals is okay i guess now we have already studied the examples of metals and nonmetals so two examples of metals are aluminum and mercury and two examples of nonmetals are carbon and hydrogen and we all know that carbon and hydrogen they are gases now see question number 3 you are given following materials classify them into metals and nonmetals okay so here we are given few following materials now we have to classify them into metals and nonmetals now see the first one iron so iron we know that it is a metal then see the next one coal so coal it is not a metal it is nonmetal sulfur so sulfur is also nonmetal aluminum now we have already studied Uh, in our previous slide that aluminum it is an example of a metal all right and copper copper is also a metal so for from here we can classify iron aluminum and copper as metals whereas coal and sulfur are non metals clear everyone all right so in this module we will see the other two physical properties of metals and non metals they are physical state and luster so basically here we will see the physical state So how we can describe physical state? So here we can simply say that how it looks from outside, all right? So basically all the metals, almost all metals, they are solids at a room temperature. For example, gold, as you can see here, gold they are solids at a room temperature. Silver, silver is also solids at a room temperature. Then copper. So copper is also uh, they are metals which is solid at room temperature. similarly aluminum all right so these are these are solids at room temperature but there are few exceptions some of the metals do occur in a liquid state at room temperature 
so we have already studied about uh, the physical state of metals as uh, they are solid at room temperature but there are a few exceptions uh, that are uh, some met metal they even occur in a liquid state at room temperature are the only metals known to occur in a liquid state at room temperature so these are the only metals uh, which is known to occur in a liquid state at room temperature so first one is mercury so basically mercury it is a, a metal but it occur in a liquid state at room temperature then second one is gallium so gallium is also a metal but it occur in a liquid state at room temperature then the third one is francium so francium it is also a metal but it is liquid at room temperature then see cesium so cesium it is also a metal which occur in a liquid state at room temperature and rubidium so rubidium is another exception of metals which occur in a liquid state at room temperature clear everyone all right now let us see the physical state of uh, the non-metals almost all non-metals are solids or gases at room temperature so almost all the non-metals they are either solids or gases at room temperature so for example graphite as you can see here graphite so graphite is a non-metal which is solid at room temperature then second one is diamond so we know that diamond it is also a non-metal which is a solid at room temperature then see chlorine so chlorine basically it is a gas so similarly nitrogen nitrogen is also a gas and as you can see here iodine so iodine as you can see it is basically uh, a black non-metallic substances at a room temperature so they are basically crystalline in appearance all right okay guys now let us see uh, there is an exception so chemistry is all about exceptions and just you have to remember those exceptions all right so see the exception bromine is the only non-metal that exists as a liquid at room temperature now we, uh, we already know about uh, the non-metals that uh, almost all non-metals uh, they appear to be either solid or gases at room temperature but here the exception is bromine because it only exists as a liquid at room temperature so it is uh, it doesn't exist either as a solid or as a gas but it exists as a liquid at room temperature so this is an exception all right now let us see the second physical property of metals and non-metals that is luster glitter or shiny surface is a property of most metals now mostly all the metals they have a shiny surface right so this is because metals can be polished now those metals mm, which have a shiny surface this is because the metals they can be polished this property is called luster so this property it is called luster that means the metals which uh, has a shiny surface because they can be polished so this property it is called a luster now for example as you can see here this is a copper plate this is a dirty copper plate so after cleaning it as you can see here it turned out to be a new one right you can compare it and see because of their ability to shine and reflect light metals like gold and silver and platinum are used for making jewelry and other decorative articles now we all got to know that the metals they have the property of luster that means they have the ability to shine and reflect light uh, so this is because since they have the property of luster so they can be used uh, for making jewelries for example gold silver and platinum so all these metals they are being used for making jewelry and other decorative articles because of the property called luster since they have the property of luster so they are being used for making this jewelries and other decorative articles clear everyone all right now let us see about the non-metals almost all non-metals have a dull surface so uh, the non-metals they do not have a shiny surface and normally they have a dull surface because they cannot be polished as most of them occur as powder and gases they cannot be polished like metals so almost all the non-metals they occur as powder and gases so this is and so this is why they have a dull surface because they cannot be polished for example as you can see here sulfur carbon and phosphorus so all they exist in a powdery form right and thus we cannot polish 
so definitely they have a dull surface even chlorine chlorine exists as a gas so we cannot uh, polish it right so it has a dull surface clear everyone but there is again an exception graphite and iodine do show some luster this graphite and iodine they are non-metals since um, we have already studied that the non-metals they have a dull surface but these two graphite and iodine they show exception because they show the property of luster that means they have got a shiny surface can you see here all right okay guys now let us see few questions see the question number one name one non-metal that occurs in a liquid state so guys now can you tell me uh, which metal that occurs in liquid state sorry which non-metal that occurs in liquid state yes definitely we have studied that it is bromine so bromine it is a non-metal that occurs in liquid state clear but we got to know that all non-metals they either exist as solid or gas but bromine it is the only exception now see the second question name a non-metal which is luster so uh, we know that the property of luster that means the metals uh, or the non-metals which so uh, which has a shiny surface but we know that uh, all the non-metals uh, they basically have a dull surface but again there are two exceptions of uh, the non-metals so they are graphite and iodine so here you are asking to give only one example so we can uh, give either graphite or iodine uh, so these are the two non-metals uh, which says luster now see the last question name one metal that occurs in liquid state okay guys now can you tell me which metal that occurs in liquid state yes definitely uh, there are three four examples you can give so first one i would like to give is that mercury all right so mercury it is a non-metal that occurs in liquid state so you try to find out what are the other metals which occurs in liquid state all right okay guys so we are done for this lecture and we will be continuing the other physical properties of metals and non-metals in our next lecture so keep on studying and thank you.